Bards for Bards may be over, but that doesn't mean the bards stop playing. Tori Draw Stuff just uploaded a wonderful tavern music video this weekend. She is an amazing violist, she's my best friend, and if you don't go watch her video, I give you disadvantage on your next wisdom saving throw. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video! Life is a series of punches and punchlines where the comedic relief is just a sad bisexual trying to cope with previous trauma. Am I talking about the character or the player? Nobody knows. But 9 times out of 10 when you start a campaign meant to be a joke, the only joke is that you're an actual clown for believing that you wouldn't cry when your fake D&D girlfriend breaks up with you. This is that story. As I'm legally obligated to make a D&D story time to be considered relevant so the YouTube gods don't murk me for inactivity, I'm choosing the campaign that ruined my life. Dragon of Icefire Peak. Don't laugh, okay? I know I'm weak. You would think one of the most basic modules used as an introduction to D&D would be more player-friendly. And you'd be right. We were just all really dramatic fanfic-obsessed girls with a party full of murder hobos needing therapy. It is what it is. So, this unsuspecting telenovela begins with Kavi. A self-confident half-elf warlock who is the physical embodiment of family issues and a lack of self-worth. Forget alignments, what would Freud diagnose you with? Anyways, Kavi is the son of two other D&D characters on this channel, but that's not important. What's important is the girl that he meets next. Enter Alestria. The Tariel clone who is herself a copy of Legolas, I guess. Her hair is red and long, and she even has the recurve to match. She's perfect, besides being a ranger, and we can't blame her for it. This was our DM's first ever PC, after all, that she thought she could throw in as a fun cameo since it had been so long. Spoilers, it wasn't just a cameo. Throwaway character? I think you mean lifelong partner and new love interest, Auga. In reality, this was only meant to be a light-hearted gag slash joke of the characters all flirting with one another, as Alestria introduced us to the town of Phandalin. Nothing creepy was ever intended, and I immediately got cock-blocked by a gremlin child named Quinn at the bar. This, however, let me find myself a new, tall drink of water. A Please don't click off the video, please, I promise I'm not a si- Anyways, this visage of beauty was actually a male painter by the name of Versace Bosch from Boulder's Gate. That's what you'd expect to hear, right? Just kidding, his, his name was actually Cher- Rock gear. As in, a Chernobyl reactor. As you can see, the story is very serious. Anyways, if I hadn't already had radiation poisoning just from hanging out with him, I definitely transmitted it another way. I ended up becoming a party sugar daddy, a strange subversion of the party father trope, and I used all my money to throw us a tiny housewarming party. By housewarming, I mean we're now staying at your house, thank you for letting us warm it party. The developing alcoholic, sorry, sorry, casual drinker, used this opportunity to roleplay and create some party bonds. Well, we bonded alright. We certainly got close. Very close. Best friends even. With this being the establishing event for Cher and Kavi's duo, the two quickly became beacons of chaos throughout Faerun, while Alestria's spare bedroom stood as a witness to their union. This is where things start to grow a little more serious, though. See, the funny haha interactions and character-based dynamics were because we started it as a pastime from college work. We would go on adventures together as these characters, slaying orcs and saving farms to avoid writing papers while everything remained lighthearted. In fact, our name for the group arose from a reoccurring joke in which every quest we took, Kavi would refuse to acknowledge it as an adventure. Instead, he chose to call them expeditions, and our friendship as roommates grew closer as the Expeditioners. Meanwhile, the Expeditioners grew closer as well. What started as a joke crush and taunting flirting developed into an actual attraction between Kavi and Alestria. Cher and Kavi remained best friends, but while their rendezvous was more of a testament of physical intimacy through humor, an emotional bond began to actually form with Alestria. Forget the stupid dragon over here trying to kill us all, okay? The, the YA level romance is what really matters, okay? And it all came to a point at Waterdeep. Now, there were two problems. Kavi was a warlock for the Prince of Frost. 
In a bid to compete with his sister's abilities for the attention of his parents, Magicless Kavi traded his freedom to perform magic. Hence, when the Prince of Frost called on him to retrieve an artifact from a noble at the Waterdeep Masquerade, he couldn't exactly say no. A second problem was with Cher. How did he end up in Phandalin in the first place? Well, running from the law after you dig up graves for anatomy practice is very motivating. The masquerade gave them a reason to remain hidden, but Kavi still didn't want to put anyone in danger. So, as they moved towards the city and picked up another companion, a plan began to take motion. Now call Kavi a Gemini, because this man thought that being literally two-faced would solve all his problems. Need to sneak into a jail? Mask him and he faces police officer. Avoiding your creepy uncle at the family picnic? Mask him and he faces Chris Hansen. So when he suddenly disappeared and went undercover as a servant without telling anyone, the party decided to go to the ball on their own still. They didn't know that his reason for being an edgy lone wolf was an attempt to try and not inconvenience them. He handled everything himself because he was taught to be the less confrontative child to not be a burden while his sister stole his parents' attention. While everyone else was completely unbothered by his absence and went on to have fun and forget him, this didn't go over well with Lestria, who had been holding on to some unspoken expectations. The carriage ride home was painfully awkward before Kavi broke the silence. And Alestria snapped. Remember how I said that everyone needed therapy? Well, Alestria had run away from home, and she didn't take too kindly to the same perceived abandonment. Kavi pointed out this hypocrisy, and she lashed out, calling him selfish and uncaring. He tried to defend himself, but she called him untrustworthy, and in an act of desperation to prove himself, he willingly told her his whole life story, explaining every little thing that had ever hurt him, explaining to her his intentions to keep everyone safe and unbothered, and while the rest of the party looked on guiltily for not even noticing. Alestrio was unfazed. He begged her to honestly communicate for the first time in the entire campaign, but she refused and said, that's not enough before getting out of the cart and leaving. Everyone thought it was over. Kavi was alone, and Alestria wasn't coming back. An unspoken line had been crossed. They had both done and said terrible things, but the final act of leaving to maintain the upper hand was truly revealing of manipulation and pain. Kavi worsened, seeing the girl that he liked step away at his most vulnerable point when he had been trying to protect her. But there, there is a happy ending. Time passed, and when cooler heads prevailed, Alestria came back. With a necklace made from her only bootstrap and moose teeth as an apology present. It wasn't much but it meant the world to him, and it began a process of both relapse and recovery for them both. Well, they do say that humor is a coping mechanism. I would never recommend anyone to be a part of an emotionally exhausting D&D game like this, but when school got hard and life got rough, D&D is what always brought us back to each other. It was our one shared outlet as friends to talk about the hard things, including toxic friendships, self-worth issues, and communication failures. So, while this campaign actually has a happy ending, unfortunately I can't say the same for the players. Me and the DM stopped talking, and I can't say it wasn't without good reason. But even when things get bad and horror stories come into existence, there's always a good memory or story left to share. And that's what this video is really about. Thanks for watching.